What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Don't Tell Mom podcast. I am Colin. This is my sister, Brittany. What's up? Hey, y'all. <laughs> I don't know where, where you are on this Zoom Zoom. We're, <laughs> we're trying a, a Zoom, the, the new Zoom app that is taken over by storm since this whole quarantine stuff. Gosh, don't you wish you invested in Zoom? I do, man. I like... I, I just watched a video last night from Philly D talking about how because it's so new and because all the teachers and moms and students and everything, universities are starting to use it. There's all sorts of like security hacks and stuff going on and people are popping in on college uh, online classes and in certain like guys and thongs and porn. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we don't get- <laughs> Hopefully you don't get hacked on this one, but um, funny. I would be okay. I'm open to hacking at this point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> freaking yeah. crazy. What? The desperate times, Colin. Desperate times. So anything that'll entertain me, I'm down for. And you know, we tried to do this. So for everybody listening and watching, this is our second go at this podcast because yesterday. Uh, we tried to do the same podcast with our mom because I was it what happened was me and mom were sitting on FaceTime anyway and uh, it was about time to that I had scheduled with Cullen to do our podcast our our on location in quarantine podcast well I said well mom's already on the phone let's get her take on all this mess and so I we just we just penciled Cullen in really we had um we tried to call Cullen and then, you know, we recorded an hour long podcast with the three of us on FaceTime. Well, you're the reason you're not seeing or hearing that recording is because we had no audio. Yeah. Well, we had like hit or miss audio. I had some audio, but then I put my headphones in because it was like echoey. And then you put- and I was recording audio, but then I put my headphones in and everybody was like, Oh, it sounds so much better. But then my audio, all you can hear is me talking. Yeah. And so there's Granberry over there. She was telling some hilarious stories about how she went fishing and had to pee in this thing and then showed her garden. And sorry, Mom, <laughs> your uh, footage got nixed after yesterday. You know what, though? I do want to use that footage at some point anyway, maybe on a vlog or whatever, to, like, dub over it <laughs> and just... And just like pretend like I'm mom and talking like her with her bags. Mom decided she was going to be a gardener this season. And well, every year she tries to grow some stuff. She's got a little bit of a green thumb. But this year she got extra lazy with it. And she went to the store and she just bought bags of miracle Grow, cut holes in the tops of them, threw them on the ground where her garden is, and planted it right there in the bag, planted all of her vegetables right in the bag. So that was interesting to see that yesterday. And. It was a good little hangout sesh anyway with the fam, you know. It was fun, and I may be able to insert some of that, like, footage, even though there's no audio, over what you were just saying so they can see the... the I really would love it, though, because I would be like, Ew, my name's Barry, and I'm, you know, a gardener, and I like to grow plants and pee, pee myself. Yeah. <laughs> like, when she's holding the... She's talking about the this apparatus. She, like, held it up to her mouth, and <laughs> we could have fun with that. <laughs> No, my favorite thing, though, is, and y'all leave it in the comments or voice message us and tell us if you've ever experienced one of these, but it's something that I really want to try. Mom and her boyfriend were out on a boat, and they had to get, she had to go to the bathroom. Well, her boyfriend has bought her this contraption that's like, it's like a cup. It's like so a woman can pee anywhere, and you, like, stick the cup down there over your hoo-ha, and you pee, and it works. And it's like a man peeing into a bottle, except the woman can now too. So she had experienced that for the first time and tried it. She loves it. Now I've got to go buy one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We, uh, yeah, we, we talked everything from quarantine to Tiger King yesterday and it, it was fun. It was, it was, like you said, it was a good hangout. I just hate that our audio got jacked up. It, I don't know. It probably worked out for the best because it was kind of, I was getting a headache just the first half of it. Like, oh my God, I hope this is even going to work. The audio. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that led us to the Zoom Zoom. And so we've switched and now we're doing the Zoom. If y'all haven't tried it, I recommend it because so far so good. The picture quality is really good. I can hear you really well. Hopefully it's recording like it's supposed to and this isn't going to be another <laughs> another wasted podcast. But <laughs> This quarantine is teaching us uh, all sorts of all sorts of stuff and something I touched on yesterday uh, that kind of mentioned was how this whole yes the virus obviously is a real thing because there's actual people dying from it but right. just the underlying um, conspiracy here he goes again uh, conspiracy behind how it's getting us to self-isolate to where we can't get in groups in person and mingle and talk shit about the president and the government and all that stuff and if we are talking I don't that much credit i don't think i don't i just don't get it <laughs> well, i think I he, believe in like the illuminati though and i believe that there are powers that be that are bigger than what we see on the tv every day you know yeah, no. This one podcast I was listening to was talking about like biochemical warfare, or bio me mechanical or biomagnetic something. Bio. It was a big word, but uh, they were talking, <laughs> <laughs> talking about how whenever there's a new technology, an advanced technology that's released, say five G, which is you know like four G, LG, five G is being released or tested or something over in China and that's where this outbreak started you have these magnetic waves that are in the atmosphere already and then whenever this virus hits it activates the cells in your body and they referred to this uh, the bird flu and then there's the swine flu and now there's the bat flu like just I don't know and it, that's, that's so the 5G is... <laughs> well, if you, if you look back in history, anytime there was a big pandemic or outbreak of something, supposedly, based on this, what they were saying, there was also some type of huge technological advance happening at the same time when everybody started getting sick. Because your cells are activate or the cells in your body, they're living little organisms, and whenever there's this outside interference that happens... I don't know. I don't really understand it. We like mingled in with technology a little bit because, you know, our cells and whatever. I do believe that to an extent. I was actually listening to something the other day. It was talking about how this is actually kind of good for the planet <laughs> because um, the less, the, there's so much less emissions and like the planes aren't flying around and the people aren't going to work and there's no car. So like they were showing the pollution over um, a okay. city. Beijing or whatever and they're showing the pollution over that city and it's like all foggy and it's you know the way that they're showing it is like it's like okay all the green light on this picture is the pollution and it's just bam the whole thing is green light and then it's showing just in the last two months since the coronavirus and the lockdowns and all this stuff and it, how significantly different it, I mean like it's so much less pollution over these big cities and so for me and my little pea brain, I'm thinking maybe this is like, this is like, like God interfering and you know what I mean? Like trying to like clean up, you know, like I saw a meme that said, this is God sending us all to our room to think about what we've done. You know what I mean? It's like, what if this is like a reset without having a wipe us clean? Well, that's what they're saying too, is it's not only a reason <laughs> that goes, but it's also an economic, uh, like felt fall completely. And again, that's why this whole government thing is like, they're, it's like a fall and rebuild uh, opportunity for them. Instead of Trump taking all the blame or the government taking all the blame about everything and how horrible and blah, blah, blah. Even though I don't know, I don't know all the statistics and stuff, but they're using this virus as a catalyst or as an excuse or as a reason to start over from scratch, essentially. Like you were saying to me yesterday about how um, you think that it's got something to do with wanting to move away from cash money and into all electronic. So it's like training the people of the world, but see that it's one thing if it's an Amer if it's America, 
that's doing this that I think for me, I feel like a conspiracy wouldn't be global. Uh, you know what I mean? Like then who are we conspiring against? <laughs> like whatever. But, well, but that's also <laughs> another thing too is, um, uh, the, the guy on the podcast is a PhD Harvard grad. And so, I mean, it's like, there's uh -oh. freaking smart, smart as far Colors as the, broke yeah. up. Don't let us down now, zoom. <laughs> uh, but he was a he was a PhD. Listen, to, is this the same one that you sent me? It was like yeah. a podcast about the conspiracy of the Joe Rogan guy. Yeah, a lot of that stuff would like made sense, and I was listening to it and was like, okay, you know, I get it. But at the same time, it's like there's just no way. It's just too large of a scale. And I believe in like Illuminati, and I think that there's like like all the big wigs or whatever, like in a room and they have this secret society and all that. Uh oh, come on now. Where'd you go? Dang it. There we are. Hey. Okay. I don't know what happened. All right, we're back at it. All right, Zoom Zoom. I was real, I was real talking good about you Zoom. <laughs> and I, you were on a, what were you saying? The Illuminati and uh, yeah, I like, I believe, I don't know. So a part of me like believes all that. There's like this new, like there's, there's this like, you know, group of the big wigs and the like higher powers that be that are like way more powerful than our government and the president. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like there might be something like that and that are taking advantage of this situation, but not, and, and like are kind of pulling the strings as far as the reaction of this. But I don't feel like, like just deep down, I don't feel like this was a conspiracy. Like we created this disease in a lab, sent it to Wuhan, you know, infected the people and then caused this global pandemic. I just don't, I can't see that happening. Now, God's inter intervention, maybe to a degree, like, you know, my whole conspiracy theory on the new world order, like there's too many people in the world. There's too much pollution. There's too much um greed and there's too much of all these things right and so i'm thinking okay well maybe this is like a divine in intervention where they're kind of they're sitting everybody down for a minute instead of ice aging our asses <laughs> they're gonna um sit us down for a minute make us go inside for fear of our own lives and to protect ourselves because that's you know human beings are selfish that's what we care about we want to save our own lives right so we're going to stay inside for the most part that's clearing out all this pollution it's clearing it's it's i hate to say that it's killing a bunch of people but like the whole mentality behind the whole new world order thing is like it's like darwinism like only the strong survive you got the weaker people like the older the elderly and the we and the people that already have diseases and stuff that are dying more because of this and i mean that's so crazy about it and that's where i get back into the whole like biomechanical magnetic field <laughs> stuff is <laughs> like you, it's not just um it, immune compromised people it's healthy athletes and now yeah now we're seeing more of like 40 year olds that are healthy or whatever and, but. Well, a couple babies or you know younger kids and it's like but like the started in China where there are already population issues and there's already too many people and they're like trying to restrict how many kids that, that, that they can have because there's too many people and it's like a population is a big thing that we don't have the resources to handle that many people and so that's what takes me back in my mind to like is this some kind of divine intervention like to to like cut the population down and to like, cut the pollution down and to like try to reset yeah without, without natural, just selection. natural selection um and just the whole the whole fact that we are learning that we can do a lot of stuff how many people are going to go back to their desk jobs after they've learned to work from home and yeah be like uh Damn it, Bobby. Uh, I've been working from home for the past two months. Why can't I just stay there now? Like, so they're right. teaching us how digital entertainment and digital media and digital, everything digital. And like you said, uh, getting rid of cash is, in, is another thing they talked about. And because all the, 
the nasty stuff on your hands from the cat. <laughs> <Dr. Becker. Yeah. laughs> There's already like stores that I've I've seen that say they have signs up that say no cash, only um, cards. And um, there was actually some type of currency. It's not Bitcoin, but it's like Bitcoin, I think, that was being tested in Utah. That um, is is like a digital currency that they're trying to test. Yeah, it's like gold checks or something, or gold something. Yeah, I've heard of that where it's like actual money they're trying to i think they are trying to, i think in general like a long-term plan is for them to weed out cash in general because the, and and you think about it that way like the government really can see every transaction right more drug deals and back alley hookers and all that stuff i mean you know like there's no big cartel oh cohen that same um podcast i think they were talking about how it just so happens that with the conspiracies, it just so happens that um, all these like huge cartel busts are happening right during this pandemic. And so it's like the news is what is all covering just the pandemic and just coronavirus. And so we're not hearing about these huge drug lords that are bringing down and these huge, um, you know, SWAT teams going out and arresting the and indict, indictments and all this stuff. You're not hearing about anything on the news other than the pandemic. Are you? I'm not hearing about anything. So it's kind of like, it makes me wonder, are they using it? Not that they started it, but are they using it to like sweep a lot of stuff under the rug? I mean, what's happening? It's election year. Or what's going on with that? Like it just makes, after being in quarantine and just do, having nothing but coronavirus in my face for the last couple of weeks, I'm starting to think like, well, what, what's going on with everything else? Well, and something else they talked about was, uh, I've heard, is there's all this funding for, uh, gosh, funding for this type of digital currency and this type of stuff. Um, geez, I can't remember the exact terminology, but one of the back run runners or one of the big fundraiser gurus in the whole thing was Jeffrey Epstein, who is already been whatever committed. Don't even get started on that guy. Yeah, so it was just like, whoa, that like came full circle and it just happened to happen right before this pandemic broke out and like um yeah, yeah, like you can't you can't get you can't say that the virus is fake. That's just stupid. But the 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 reaper or the reaction that everybody's doing because it's of it game calling it's chess this ain't checkers everybody else playing checkers and then you got the powers that be that are over here playing chess and they're thinking about this like me i feel like i'm a chess player because <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that i did when it bottomed out in the stock market was go buy a bunch of stocks Colin, i'm gonna make a bunch of money off that i hope I and, uh, huh Go ahead. I was just about to say, I just saw um, Dave Ramsey speaking of cash only after we started doing all this. Now I'm like, what the hell is going to happen with that? He just posted <laughs> this. And said, um, speaking of stock markets, we're talking about Johnson and Johnson says they will begin human trials of their COVID-19 vaccine by December and the product could be ready in early 2021. Partnering with the U.S. government, they will invest one billion dollars to create enough manufacturing capacity to make more than 1 billion doses of the vaccine. So uh, maybe if you invested in Johnson & Johnson, that's a good thing. Um, pet adoptions across the US are up as much as tenfold in the past two weeks, and some animal shelters are now completely empty. And the FDA has approved a coronavirus test that can give results in five minutes. The company says it will be able to deliver 50,000 tests a day by April 1st. Hey, Cullen, all I'm hearing when you're saying all this good news is money. <laughs> <laughs> stocks are going up. Every time there's good news, my stocks go up. Every time there's bad news, they dip a little. So so here's what I was like. The day I listened to this, this whole thing that opened up my mind to everything as far as like, yes, the virus is real, blah, blah, blah. But there's all this other stuff going on. Uh, there was talk about how the government and the administration wanted this to kind of like happen, but they didn't want it to happen. They didn't necessarily predict that it would happen this fast and that we would take this immediate reaction, even though there's still idiots out there.
partying it up and stuff, but like because it did happen so fast and because everybody just shut down shop and everything, that's when the economy, Trump was like, whoa, hang on, I didn't mean for all this to happen so quick. And then he even tweeted, after I got done listening to that, he tweeted and was like, I have a feeling by Easter we'll be back up and running. And I was like, whoa, they, they were just talking about how they thought that he, you know, and so now he's like going back on his word of, or I don't know. It was just like, this crap is crazy. Like, right. Cause now it's, it's the 30th. Cullen, I hate to tell you this, but we're looking into May. Yeah. The end of May. Well, and what is, what does it even mean to like, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out like when my kids go back to school or when we all get quote unquote relief. Yeah. Back in- try to go back to normal, which there will never be. There's going to be a new normal. There's like never- are all the cashiers going to have to wear gloves? Are all the stores going to have a six foot distance rule or law or like, Still- how can you go back to schools and like, are they going to start teaching how to wash hands more properly, even though they already do that? But, like, yeah. I just don't see how it's going to go back to normal and when. Like, when's this going to end? I think the last pandemic or the last thing like this that happened was, I think, SARS, right? Or the mad cow or bird or something. But that those were not nearly on this scale. It wasn't as, like, easily tra- transmitted and, you know, like, it wasn't like this. But these days and the, and the times that we're living in with the technology to get information to each other so fast and just how different, like there's never been a pandemic, especially a global, like no one's ever done this before. This is all new. So it's like, it's like, it's like we, we, we were building, um, we're building the example. We are the example, right? So from here on moving forward, exactly like you're saying, is this going to be the new normal to have gloves and masks on hand and just in case and all this stuff? I don't think necessarily. I think it's going to be like the flu. And I think there's going to be the fear of getting it every year and you're going to have to get a, a COVID-19 shot with your flu shot every year. And I think that they're going to get it under control and things are going to go back to normal. But I think that everybody is going to be a little their senses are a little heightened you know what i mean they're gonna be a little bit more aware of who's rubbing up against you at the grocery store or who's touching you or you know like for me colin right now i went to the grocery store yesterday and just the the common sense that's lacking from society blows me away and i hadn't really paid any attention to it until this has all happened Mm, like like I think that it's changing most more than anything. It's changing people's mentality about other people. Like I had no idea that people were so dumb. Yeah. (laughs) That were just, that just lacked, that just maybe not dumb, but you just lack common sense. It, It just blows me away. My, more than anything, I think that my, um, perception of other people is, is altered from this. Yeah, yeah. And how people react and how rude and nasty people can be about when when they're when they feel like they have an they are allowed to have an opinion about what you're doing in your lane and then they start speaking on that, like the just the nasty side of people comes out and it's like I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm on the fence about it too because I'm just like you were so dumb. This lady squeezes. She's got a mask on and gloves. Yet she's going to rub against me because she forgot something in an aisle at the grocery store. Like we're in the checkout yesterday. Uh. And me, I'm pregnant with my baby in the car trying to hold my breath every time somebody walks by me. I'm keeping my distance from everyone. Got Clorox wipes. I'm constantly wiping everything. And then this lady's in front of me and she's going to check out and she's got a mask on and the gloves and all this stuff. But, but she says, oh, well, I forgot something. And so she has to, so instead of walking around, she wants to squeeze past me and literally brush up against me and my child in my cart, squeeze past us in the checkout lane yeah. to get, go get her toilet paper or not toilet paper, but her whatever she forgot. And I'm just going like, 
you couldn't have gone around. You know what I mean? Just the, and maybe it's because people just aren't used to it and they're just, you know, going right. on pilot and they're just not used to having to make these little changes, but it's just like, it doesn't make sense. Why are you, why are you going to have the, the gloves and the mask on if you're going to go rub up against people? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the, uh, just the whole thing too, getting back to normal is once it does get back to normal and people are just lackadaisical as far as that goes, you're going to have like the other strand of it break out. And then we're going to have to self isolate again in a couple years or next year or whatever, depending on how long this goes. And so that's what the scary part is, is like just the unknown of, or the uncertainty of the virus and um, the, the uh, different ways it could, because there are right. different, there's different flu vaccines. I don't know. And I, I saw somebody else tweet yesterday and say something like, it's going to be real funny how uh, quiet all the anti-vaxxers are once this uh, COVID-19 vaccine is released. <laughs> those are the ones, because those are the people that are being all rude and speaking out like, well, the CDC says for everybody to stay in the house and you better be at home and all that. And then, and then you're the one, and then it's like the CDC says get your kid vaccine too, but you don't listen to them when it comes to that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I wonder what their, what their what, is going to be on it. Well, I know as far as as far as we're concerned, we're staying home. Um, Corey, he does he has to work still during all this, um, so you know we're fortunate just to have a job. Think about all the people that are out of work, Cohen. Then they got protesting, like the nurses are protesting outside of hospitals. You got um, Amazon workers protesting. They had an Amazon, I was watching the news or something, an Amazon warehouse had positive people that worked there, test positive, and Amazon kept on like normal, like nothing was happening. And they were protesting and they were six feet apart in the protest, like holding up signs every six feet. <laughs> Because it's like, how are you going to not even shut the warehouse down when we've got positive tests in the building and Amazon just carrying on like nothing's happening. And so the, the workers, they are protesting. And then you got the instant cart people that are protesting. They're saying they should at least get a hazard pay or some gloves and some, some uh, hand sanitizer or something because they're the ones having to go out into the world to get the groceries, to bring them home to me and my family so we're safe, which I don't use them, but I... I thought about it. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's the other just the the whole economic downfall of all these little delivery services and stuff, and then the like you said, Amazon and um, God, I, I, when we get an Amazon package, we Lysol it, <clears throat> sit it out, leave it outside, Lysol it down. I even thought about making like a TikTok of me like getting some tongs and then having like a <laughs> suit on and then throwing it into a pot of boiling water, but. <laughs> Never, <laughs> never did that. I <laughs> gotta do something. I, when I came home from the grocery store yesterday, before I put anything in the refrigerator, put anything away, I literally Clorox wiped everything, and I don't have any Lysol spray. I'm out of that. Mm -hmm. So what are you gonna do, Cullen, when the Lysol runs out? How many yeah. cans do you have? Because there ain't more. I don't know. I don't know. That that's the. Huh. It's all out. Just so you know. It's, it's all. Oh, it's all. Oh, yeah, they have restocked some of the toilet paper last I saw, but um, and, and that was another thing last Saturday, our, our uh, county or our uh, state, I think it was the the mayor did a, like a mandatory shutdown of everything except essentials, uh, essential stores. And so I immediately went to the liquor store. <laughs> essential. I was well, like, essential, didn't they? They said, yeah, well, we, there was a sign on the door that said, don't touch the door. Somebody will open it for you. And see, that is one of the, the, the good things about it. There are several stores that are taking those proactive measures and they'll wipe down the uh, buggy. I went to the store the other day and they had a lady out there with gloves and a mask on and she was wiping down every buggy before they handed it to you and then wiping it off when you got it back. And uh, Yeah. And then when I went to the liquor store, they had it like blocked off and they had a girl out there kind of getting it for you. you Nobody know, was touching things, but yeah, they're trying, they're doing their part. The essential places are doing their part to try to keep everybody away from each other. Like CVS, I had to go get a prescription for my pregnancy, like my medicine. 
and they had it where they only wanted one person per aisle leading because you know the, the pharmacies in the back of CVS and then they had tape on the floor like stay in here don't you know like they were yeah. direct people just stay in here they and then you have to be in this aisle or this aisle or this so you're like an aisle apart plus your tape six feet apart plus you can't come up till the next person leaves and then they have and then every time somebody leaves and walks away from the little card pad they were Lysol on the card pad where you type in your pin number it's like all these little things come that we never really paid attention to like the things that were touching like the card like to put your pin number in or yeah. And somebody even said, oh, when you stick your card in the machine and you come and take it back out, wipe your card off. Yeah, yeah. You know, like all things that you just never really paid attention to anymore because it never really meant. Now you're starting to pay attention to. And it's I was at the store the other day with my shirt on the keypad, just like doing it like this to, so I wouldn't have to touch. Even I was wearing gloves even, but I still didn't want the gloves because that was another thing is like, I knew my gloves were going to touch the card. And then I knew once I touched the card, I would probably reach in my pocket and touch my phone, swipe on my phone and then touch something in my car. And then like, it's just a whole. Uh, like you see it. Like I wish that they had like a spray that you could spray and just see where the COVID-19s are. You know what I mean? I still like, send you that video, uh, the Mark Rober video where he did that experiment on the classroom. Uh -huh. I'm gonna see that when we get done because he does that where you can see how fast the germs spread yeah that's crazy to me like uh i don't know trying to stay safe Corey's coming home from work in the next uh couple of days hopefully and then hopefully he'll be here a little while you know being pregnant is is really scary i was listening to a podcast the other day about just being pregnant during this time and the stress so i'm trying to like not let my stress levels get up. Like, I feel like I'm in, I'm safe. I'm home. Like it's not the end of the world. Even if this last two months, like I'd rather just hunker down and be here and be safe and, and hope I don't get it. But like, I'm sick right now. And so, you know, of course my first thing is, Oh my God, I have COVID-19 and my baby's got it. And she's, if I've got it, she's got it. She's got it. Cause we give each other kisses and all this stuff. I'm like, Oh my God. And then I just had to like literally calm myself down. I've been doing like meditation and trying to like focus on, uh, on things like that that are like are happy things. And I have to turn the news off and stop watching the new, the, the bad. I have to stop watching the bad stuff and try to focus on something other than the COVID-19, which brings me to the Tiger King, which I know everybody else is choosing to focus on. Colin, I, I still haven't watched it. I don't have Netflix anymore. I canceled my Netflix. I do the YouTube TV and Hulu, but um, I just felt like Netflix was the same shit over and over again. Well, now I'm like, dang, I want to get I want to get Netflix just so I can watch this. But I was watching I, it on uh, something else. I thought, uh, what was the other deck? And I've got that broken into, but I tried to watch it on that, that and um, there was no nobody was streaming. Like that's like watching on the internet, like illegally. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. He's got a um, he's got a YouTube channel that I was watching too. But um, basically, anybody out there that doesn't know about Tiger King, it's a gay guy that owns an exotic. His name's Joe Exotic, and he owns an exotic uh, tiger farm, a uh, big cat farm. And he is currently in jail because halfway through this, I was like, we got to get Joe Exotic on the podcast. And Wait, uh, he's, a, he's a, what? He's in jail? Yeah, he's currently in jail right now for a murder to hire plot uh, or hire to murder plot. So he uh, owns like 1,200 tigers and lions and all this stuff, but he is like one of the most flamboyant guys. He had two husbands. He was on drugs. He had a mullet, dyed blonde, and you just pictures. I see lots of me. I've seen so many memes and so much stuff about it on the internet that I feel like I already know what's going on. Kinda like, didn't he have the tiger that Britney Spears used in her big performance, the snakes and the tigers and all that? No, yeah, maybe, probably so. But um, there was a lady against him, Carol Baskin, who was trying That's to kill Carol. We hate her. Well, that's the one that that's the one that he uh, had a plot to kill, and they they ended up 
fighting or going to jail. He's in jail because of this whole, and he paid. Oh, he was kill her. Yeah. And so. Uh, <clears throat> I we'll, saw some, saw a meme this morning that was like, isn't it funny that Carol um, did Tiger King trying to expose Joe Exotic and this other guy? And it turns out like all of America just hates her and thinks that she's like, <laughs> she's like the worst, which I'm, I don't know. But I've got to watch it. I'm gonna I'm gonna find myself a way to watch Tiger King. That's for sure. It's it's one of those like train wrecks you can't stop watching because at first I was like, eh, well, this is dumb. Like first two episodes, yeah, I don't know. It's Corey. What? Yeah, Corey was like, I don't see what all the fuss is about. I don't get it. But I saw this really funny meme that's like it's like Donald Trump and he's whispering to some other guy and then the captions like was like. Oh shit! There's a pandemic. Release the Tiger King videos. <laughs> like, try, trying to distract everybody. <laughs> yes. Well, he actually ran for president at one point, and it's just freaking hilarious. You can probably find it <laughs> on YouTube. The campaign video against Donald Trump, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty vicious. These tigers are massive. It's Do that. Be well, just to hang out with some big tiger cubs. I want the baby tiger cubs. Well, see, that's what the whole show talks about is how he, this one guy, he gets uh, Jim, Jim Lowe or Jeff Lowe or somebody comes in out of nowhere when he's, when uh, Joe Exotic is down in the money. And this guy comes from Las Vegas with his girlfriend and like uh, invests in this property at the zoo. And he like talks about how his whole shtick and they, they have pictures of like him with like six girls and his whole thing was bringing baby cubs with him to lure these women into his hotel room. And then they would do drugs and have like <laughs> orgies and stuff, but they would even show him like putting little baby cubs in a hard shell uh, suitcase and rolling them through the hotel up to his hotel room. And so he would go clubbing and then say, I got some baby tigers back in my room. And then he would get the, get the girls. That's up. Gay. Why would he need all the girls up there? To have an orgy. <laughs> but he's gay. He doesn't need the women. He's oh, no, this was a different guy. This was the, uh, uh, the partner that uh, came Alex. in to invest with him. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he took over the zoo once Joe Exotic <laughs> got arrested. Hey, I guess it's something, anything to keep us distracted and our minds off of the craziness that is the world right now. I'm all about it, man. Hopefully y'all are staying sane over there. I imagine having the two kids and out of school and they're just wilding out. I'm sure that that's, it's like summertime, I guess, for y'all, because y'all are used to being at home working, but no, not much has changed here. Other than, I mean, the only place we ever went anyway was the grocery store. Now it's just stress and fear, <laughs> but we're yeah. just having, being pregnant, trying to, I'm praying that this whole thing ends before the baby comes, trying to keep my little one safe. And, um, and when Corey comes home in a couple of days, I think we're going to try to quarantine him for a few days. Um, you know, just to be safe. And we've been checking our fevers every day. And well, just don't we, um, we're almost, down to our last like everything we've got a list we're going to probably spend eight hundred dollars at sam's and that's another it's just like we don't want to have to get out but we're like we're literally going through everything we can right now in our pantry but um the, the whole quarantine when Corey gets home is probably a big deal i don't know the god i hope he's like being safe out there he is yeah he's he's not working around a bunch of people he's in like he's in like um a boiler like a big plant you know like working with metal and there's a couple guys that might have had that probably have a lot more than just the COVID-19 <laughs> just some dirty scruffy guys that he's in there working with and, um he's been fine I feel like if Corey got it he probably coughed once and uh three shits and a cough and he'd be he'd be good well, that's the thing too though is like it's worse actually than what the media is portraying. I think mom sent us that video from that nurse in Mobile. And yeah. I've, I've heard some other particular stories about how they're not, they're not, there's a lot of confidential stuff. They're not, it's, it's a lot worse than they're saying. And so the, the numbers are kind of, even though the numbers are like doubling every day in our state or our country, 
they're probably tripling, but they're just not announcing it and stuff in the ventilator situation. And, oh, it's so scary. I know. I know. We just got to take deep breaths and just stay inside and do your part. I mean, how often are you being told that you have to stay inside and watch and binge watch Tiger King and TV shows? And and, and that's like helping. You know what I mean? Like you're doing your part. <laughs> so I'm trying to like – Stay positive. Keep yourself in a happy, positive mindset. Um, I'm just trying not to go crazy with this baby. I try to get her out of the house, though, and we'll go to the park and we'll go fishing and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and stay home, and we can do it. Yes, this is a good uh, break every week, doing this. And, like, yesterday talking to Mom, even though that footage sucked as far as publishing, we were still able to talk to her. And games yesterday talked to one of her – school friends and literally they took the ipad up to her room and it was after it was a little over two hours i think and um they i i was like i don't know how long this is going to last when they first started talking because i was like what are they going what are a five-year-old going to talk about but they were so excited to talk to each other that we let her we left, left her with the ipad and she went up there and put on elsa dresses and they put on makeup and she got done and she was like, it was like Lucy was here at my house. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's Instagram stories you posted about that. And it's just like, it's like, how fun is that? Y'all should have been doing that anyway. Like after school, just letting her hang out with her friend after school. Like, like you were saying earlier, Colin, this is going to be the new norm. Like yeah. hang out with somebody. You have FaceTime them now. Yes. And then the government can track anything or any plot that you have. And, and watch you like a hawk. That's right. You in person and planning something. It's the all days of privacy are over, Cullen. Yeah. This is <laughs> my, crazy. My baby is literally freaking out. I gotta go. Oh shit. Okay, go. <laughs> Good one. <It> <laughs> <was> <laughs> for listening again this week and um and for tuning in for these. We're gonna be doing, you know, Cullen and I, we're keeping our distance from each other, just doing our part here. So we're going to be doing these from home and um, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, we're going to get some people. I do want to get some people on the podcast that are on the front lines or that have actually had it before yeah. and see if we can figure out how to do that um, and set that up. With Zoom, we can do it. It looks like where we can talk to people from through this. Oh, uh, you're breaking up right at the end. Well, as you say that, you start breaking <laughs> I know. No, it's okay. Zoom, Zoom, I think might be able to handle it. We'll figure that out. I think it's your model. All right. Uh, well, stay, well, thank you guys for listening. Make sure to favorite, like, all that stuff. Review the podcast. That helps us get seen out there in podcast world. Go check out my new podcast called Victims. Um, it should be on all your podcasting platforms. And we'll see you guys or hear from you next week. Don't tell mom. Peace. Peace. Peace.